How's it going folks, it's Rob here. Last weekend I posted a clip uh, just asking your folks opinion on whether I should keep or mow a trombone squash out in the front patch here. Just being winter, it hasn't been producing too well and the few fruit that did form I actually found had been blown by the pesky Queensland fruit fly. They were full of maggots. So I pretty much will ask you guys because I wanted to involve you in something that happens around the patch. A number of you folks have been following us up to five years so I thought it was time to, you know, maybe include you in a decision on what goes on. There was no one telling me that I had to mow it and I didn't want to mow it or anything like that just wanted to you know have a bit of input from you fine folks out there so I was supposed to get back to you folks on Monday or Tuesday just letting you know whether the plant got the chop or not but yeah we just had rain uh, pretty much all hard to mow uh, fairly long grass when it's wet from the rain so I put it off for a couple of days then other things cropped up so anyway I'll stop rabbiting on I got out here in the front patch yesterday and did a bit of work so we'll spin the camera around and I'll show you what the decision was so that's where I was sitting next to some beautiful flowering broccoli and just down there is where the squash was as you can see it definitely got the mow um, <laughs> it was a very overwhelming response in the um, comment section to give it the chop so that's what happened uh, we'll just come over to the bed and I'll give you a bit of a closer look. As you can see though, I have saved the plant. Uh, what I've done is I've just kept the healthiest looking leader that was coming off from the mother plant and I've installed a little bit of a pole there, just using some scrap from the chicken pen. Um, it will be used back in the chicken pen, but I thought I'd use it now as a bit of a post. And on that post I have some baling twine. And on the baling twine, I've used one of our cucumber clips or tomato clips just to hold up the um, squash vine itself. And hopefully what's gonna happen is it will grow up there. I'm sorry if this gets a little bit glary, folks, but it's gonna grow up there and then across this bit of baling twine using those um, cucumber clips. And then hopefully onto this uh, little bit of a trellis frame here. Thank you again, Alison and Mark. Um, they supplied the gates, by the way. So the idea is hopefully I can um, keep it off the ground um, so it'll be easier to see the fruit. Not only that, uh, the fruit will be easier to bag from the Queensland fruit fly once it's off the ground, I think. So there you go. Hopefully that will solve both issues. With the bed itself, you might notice it's a little bit different. I trimmed back the uh, tie basil at the front there. Um, after I trimmed it back, I did notice there were a number of seedlings that had shot over the far side so I actually dug them out and popped them into a root pouch that had been fed up with a little bit of compost and they're just out the back there and hopefully they'll take and survive. It's always nice to have some Thai basil on the go. With these plants here though I haven't pulled them out or cut them right back because there are still a few little bits of um, greenery on them. Just down there there's some greenery so we'll see if um, these plants will bounce back again but I did want to open up the bed a little bit. For the bed itself, I fed it up with a mixture of um, fertilizer that I've bought in. I used some of the uh, organic chicken based fertilizer and also some of the um, calcium rock dust fertilizer. And I just um, spread that around the top of the bed. Over the top of that, I put roughly 20 liters of our own homemade compost. The stuff here that I'm using from the new cage is absolutely teeming with worms. So a lot better than the last compost cage worth of compost I made up. On top of that, I popped on a bag of worm castings from Brian the Worm Man. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, he was so kind, he even tossed in a few compost worms with the castings. So hopefully that'll add a bit of extra nutrient to the bed. And then just to cover up that um, castings, I put on another 20 litres of my own compost and topped it off with some sugarcane mulch. So hopefully uh, that'll be enough to feed up this little runner and we'll get a little bit more growth out of it. It'll be interesting to see how long the plant actually survives. Also too, I have put a bit of baling twine just up there towards the top of the post in case a vine grows towards the back. And I've always had that little bit of twine there to um, try and trellis plants along as well. So there you go, that's what happened to the squash plant. It did get the chop, but uh, she also lives. Oh, just by the way, these um, vacant bits of garden bed here, I'll probably end up putting in some um, bush beans, some snap beans. Uh, pop them in there because I've been missing my beans lately. Uh, while we're here, we might as well give you a bit of a look at the rest of the patch. Uh, this cauliflower out the front here, we had a white one up the back there bolt. So we chopped her off and the rest of the coloured cauliflower look to be taking their time. So we haven't seen any heads form on them yet. But um, on the good news side of things, we've only had minimal pest damage. I think that's probably a um, grasshopper by the look of it. So not many bug holes or anything. 
Over in this next bed, these bush beans haven't taken off too well, but then again, I'm using compost from the um, old compost cage, the one that didn't have many compost worms in it, so I'm starting to think maybe it wasn't the best compost. So some of these beans are starting to get uh, a little bit of burn on the tip there, not too sure why. But the cabbages up the back there, I'm not seeing much pest damage, if any, so hopefully they'll do all right. So in this bed next to it, we have the uh, purple cauliflower that I planted out and three more beans along the front. I don't think I posted that clip publicly. I think it was just a Patreon, but yeah, I did post a little clip on those guys. Uh, just over in this end bed, just to show you, we got the taro who's decided to shoot again. I've just left this, guy, this lot in because the bulbs or the rhizomes weren't large enough. So I thought I'd just leave them and see what happens this year. But as you can see, I only put one in and we've got what? There's four main bulbs, there's another bulb over the back. So they look fairly prolific. I think I will be uh, topping up this bed with a load of uh, the fresh compost though, and maybe some other fertilizers, just to give them a bit of a kick along. So there you go, there's a bit of a um, update on what's going on out the front here, and a bit of a result for this squash plant. Oh, also too, this sweet potato is nearly ready to come out. And these bee peas have decided to boom once I fertilize that bag a bit, so, or pouch I should say. So yeah, the plants out the front here are doing fairly well. And the bees are still loving this broccoli. So thanks to all you folks who um, left a comment in the last clip, uh, just letting me know what you thought we should do with the little plant. I really do appreciate all the comments we get and I do go through and read them all. I actually answer probably around about 90, 95% of all the comments that are made on our clips. It does take me a while sometimes to get back to them, but I do get back to them and answer them all. So. Thank you very much, folks. So I'd also like to thank you awesome folks over on Patreon. Thank you very much, folks, for deciding to um, support our channel. Um, there's a little bit of a uh, roll up there, a uh, roll call of all the people who have decided to help us along. So thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. A few same folks at that pledge level. Um, I'm also organizing the Google Hangout. Um, so we work out on if you guys want a topic or whatever, and I'll get in contact with you this week. Uh, for everyone else who's not quite aware what Patreon is. It's a way you can show your support to channels like myself. There's other channels out there who use it. Um, just help basically us to be able to provide more content for you folks because it is very time consuming and it's basically become my job um, providing content to YouTube and answering questions every day online on aquaponics and different um, aspects of backyard farming. So every little bit does help. Um, for us people on the other end of the camera here. Um, so yeah, you can check out uh, what we offer on our little um, link down there. You can hop over to Patreon and see what we do. I'll be uploading another clip explaining it a little bit better in the near future, hopefully. So there you go. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate everyone who comes along and looks at our YouTube clips and um, says good day on Facebook and Instagram and everything. I really do appreciate you all. I do hope everyone is well and happy too, and I will catch you next clip. Cheers, folks. B and I decided to leave these broccoli flowers out the front here because obviously the bees are enjoying it. It's giving them something to forage on. Haven't seen many of our natives though, just mainly the Europeans. We have been coming out every now and then and nipping off a couple of the tips and some of the younger ones just to toss in a salad. But for now, we're pretty you know, content on leaving it for the bees and the other beneficials around the place. So, I haven't seen many pests on it this season, which is good too. See you later, little bee. Just letting you know whether the plant got the chop or not. But yeah, we just had rain, uh, pretty much all hard to mow uh, fairly long grass when it's wet from the rain, so I... But yeah, we just had rain, uh, pretty much all 